Please step closer. Welcome to the greatest show on earth. We will today give you the best snake oil in town, the best features and the best back rubs. So, we are going to talk about disaster and recovery toolkit. A tool that's so great that you will wish you had a lot more of problems. The disaster and recovery toolkit are a part of the MDOP package from Microsoft. And we are going to take a look at the disaster recovery parts when we are booting up a computer and try to see what we can do with the different utilities. Uh, I have just started up a Windows uh, computer. Uh, it asked me if I want to have network connections, and of course we would like network connections so we can update our antivirus or copy data through the network. So we say yes. It also asks if we want to remap the operating system so we can have direct access to reg registry, to event viewer, and uh, services and different stuff. So of course we want to do that. We put up the Norwegian keyboard, and it will search for the Windows installation. Uh, it found my installation on, of Windows 7. Push Next, and we get the ordinary WinRE, the recovery utility. But we have an addition called Microsoft Diagnostic Gear and Recovery Toolkit. So we are just going to go in there. And this is the list of utilities that are given to us by um, Mark Rosinovich. Uh, he had uh, Sys internals, Win internals web page before he started to work at Microsoft. And here we will find a lot of the uh, utilities he created. Uh, we have a registry editor. Uh, just Going into that one, we'll, we will see that it uh, actually starts up the local registry on the windows I just selected. So we can go in and find different bugs uh, in the HD current config, for instance, local machine, uh, and users. We can also use the load hive to load different users' configurations. We also have the locksmith. <coughs> Every tool we have here, we can customize, customize if it should be on the CD or not. This is a boot CD or a boot WIM file, so we can actually boot it with uh, pressing F12 with Pixie Boot. And we can exclude utilities like the locksmith, because we don't want to give locksmith to our ordinary users, because they can go in and find our passwords. Administrator, new password, like this. So we will make sure that for the ordinary user, we exclude the locksmith. Uh, for uh, uh, enterprise uh, admins and uh, IT department, we can give them the locksmith tool if you want to. We also have the crash analyzer. If the computer has crashed and you don't get it up again, uh, you will also have the uh, possibility to inclu include more disk drivers, RAID controllers, and so on. If you don't find it with the built-in drivers, you can add them later, and you can even add them during boot, boot up. Uh, we have the file restore to restore files. It's a decent file restore. It's not the best, but it's a decent uh, file restore. Uh, if you ever delete files, you need to recover turn off the PC, boot it up in WinPE, because if you try to install an uninstallation program, you would mo most likely write over the files you want to recover. So if you have deleted something you shouldn't delete, stop the PC at once. Boot it up by USB stick, CD-ROM, or something else, and then start to look for the files. We have Disk Commander, we have Disk Wipe, uh, on disk wipe, we can uh, wipe it for four times to make sure that everything is clean. So we will also use this when we are giving away computers to wipe disks. It's just stupid to give away computers without hard disks. 
It will cost as much to buy a hard disk and put it in as just buying a cheaper uh, new computer. So when you're giving away computers, give them away with wiped disk. We have computer management. Uh, and we can see this is also loaded from the operating system that should be included on the drive. Uh, so the event viewer will actually now go in and collect the events that have happened on my computer before it crashed. Uh, we got Windows log and we got application logs. Uh, system log, for instance. This is my system log on the installed operating system that is not started now. Uh, application logs could be important because you have uh, different stuff here like uh, BitLocker and other things you want to take a look at. Uh, we have auto runs that tell us what kind of applications are being started by the different user or services. Like we want to know what do we start as user one. Luckily nothing, user two, uh, and so on. Uh, so if you get a virus, this will also be a good uh, way of trying to clean it up. We can clean it up by going and find every auto run stuff. We can go in and uh, look for services and drivers that shouldn't be there. Uh, we can go in and find the driver we have just stopped and start it again. For instance, if you have stopped the RAID controller, it will not start. We can boot it up. Uh, go in and set the driver to uh, boot. Uh, the same thing with services. If you have stopped an important services that crashed the system, we can go in here, set it to automatically start. Uh, and we also have disk management. Uh, the help, somebody unsure about what the help is for? Okay. Uh, we have File Explorer, and since we have connected to the network, we can go in, fi find files, and we can copy them over the network. Uh, we can also include our own utilities if we want to. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, user state migration toolkit and migrate everything from the computer to a network share. So we can import it later. And we can also plug and play in new disk to copy it over. Uh, we have the solution wizard that actually just go through scenarios where to test it why doesn't your computer start. Uh, do you have a boot problem? Do you have a disk problem? Do you have system file that's been corrupted and so on? Uh, so it will just ask you a series of questions and try to analyze the problems. System will not start, start correctly. Next. View diagnostic information, perform a repair. Uh, it will take some time so we can, uh, we will not do that now. Uh, we have the TC, uh, TCP IP configuration if you don't get uh, DACP address, we can go in and type in an own address. If this was a server on a network without DACP, we can uh, just type it in. Uh, we have the hotfix uninstall. At some time, you get hotfixes that make the system worse than it was. For instance, uh, a couple of uh, years ago, we had a, uh, a virus that uh, just crash the screen if you installed it a speci specified uh, hotfix from Microsoft. It's not hotfix, it's every fix from Microsoft you can uninstall from here. And then we can just uninstall the hotfix and uh, the system will, would uh, work again. Uh, in the scenario with a virus, uh, you would most likely get rid of the virus instead of the hotfix, but it will make the system run. But we also have the possibility, if you have a virus, to use the standalone system sweeper to check for viruses. We have the system files uh, scanning, where we can go in and see if there are any system files that need to be repaired. Uh, we have search to search for files. And the standalone system sweeper is just security essential, basically. It's an uh, antivirus, and since we have network connection, we could actually upgrade it with the newest definitions. Uh, and the great thing now, if you first get virus and you need to clean it up, it's just like with deleted files. Stop the computer, insert a boot device, and then scan for viruses. Because the viruses are hidden 
And if you try to look for it when, while it's running, it will most likely just hide more and uh, duplicate itself. So we can have a uh, start full scan. We see the antivirus version is the same that FREP uses for front endpoint protection. Start full scan, and it checks my computer for viruses. Uh, the last and newest feature arrived uh, uh, in version 7 that's called remote connection. This is a utility you might give your user or the user on the network can press F12 and it will boot up and they have the diagnostic uh, possibilities. But most user isn't that uh, comfortable with uh, working in an environment like this. So we just say go into the remote connection and you get up this message. Uh, I have actually typed in the message myself. When you create the CD or the WIM file, you can type in a message you want to uh, state to the users, like, please call uh, IT department at EDB Ergo Group, and we will fix everything for you. Uh, so we just say yes. And we get up a ticket number, IP address, and a port number. You can be, use a random port number, but it could be nicer to use a known port number so you know what to connect to. And you can also modify the boot image to start up with remote connection automatically enabled. So the first thing that uh, will pop up is this window. On my installation here, I will have uh, installed Microsoft Dart 7, that's the newest one, and I have a utility called Dart Remote Connection Viewer. See? On the viewer, you just type in the ticket number. Oh, I started it twice or something like that. You have the ticket number. Uh, And we have the IP address and the port number, port number 433. And the IP is 192.168.069. Connect, and we are in. Uh, of course, we need the, uh, the firewalls around the, our system to be open for the port we choose to use here. So, but uh, it's an easy way to help users. I just disconnect here again, because we're not going to use it. Uh, that was the last uh, tool in the, the Dart Boot CD, but we also have some small tools installed in the Dart folder. It's Crash Analyzer, and it's Dart Recovery Image Creator. The Dart Recovery, uh, Recovery Image Wizard will help us create the uh, Bootsy we just now, uh, now selected. Uh, and it will also give the possibility to include tools we need. For instance, in my CD, I have included some tools. So I can just go into the Explorer. And in the Explorer, I will find a folder called, let's see, in the boot, of course, folder called Tools, where my favorite tools are. Or are, so I can just go in and start them and uh, do, like I told you, use, use the state migration toolkit or different other tools. So this is basically the tool. It's uh, easy to download. It's uh, available for everybody with TechNet, uh, uh, TechNet uh, possibilities, MSN possibilities, or just they have bought it from Microsoft. If you have software uh, assurance, you can buy it. Uh, so this will uh, easily make it uh, more feasible to uh, work around problems you will have in the, the, daily, in the daily system. Uh, it will work as well on servers as on clients. You have 64-bit version and 32-bit versions. So that's all for me. Thank you.
any question, I will be at the EDB org group uh, booth, so just come around.